Well, thankfully, we don't have many oil spills, but we need to be ready for oil spills when they come. So there's a great energy when we get a good exercise going. Um, we're very unusually, we've been uh, able to release some oil onto the surface of, of the water, and that gives us a tremendous amount of data. So this would be the second time we've done it over the last 10 years, so that gives you an idea of how often we're able to do this. It takes a lot of permissions, uh, we obviously have to take great care of the environment, but in putting real oil on the water, it gives us some real data that's just invaluable for us. The technology is advancing at a tremendous pace, and one of our challenges is keeping up with that technology. And uh, we get an awful lot of data from all of these different tools and techniques out there, and our challenge is to turn that information into useful data for decision making. I'm uh, coordinating the shoreline survey teams that went out yesterday as part of the licence approval we had to do uh, shoreline surveys on the back of the Isle of Wight. So looking at the, the access there, looking at the shoreline types um, and if we saw any oil in a, in a real spill we would make recommendations on how that oil was cleaned up. But as part of the exercise we're just going out and recording what we're seeing. So after the oil is released today Tomorrow, the guys will go back out and resurvey those um, parts of the shoreline to, uh, just to check that there's no oil that's been impacted on the shoreline, and that's all recorded um, in, a, in a digital um, system that we have here. And I can interact with the shoreline surveys from the command centre here through the software. Well, yeah, the, the, the SCAT process, the shoreline survey process, is in, in, a, in a real oil spill, is there as the eyes and ears of the planning and operations guys. So they'll go out, they'll record uh, if there's oil there or if there isn't oil, which is more important, so that you allocate resources for, for cleanup into the right places. What we're doing with, with the software on this spill is the first time that we're using some um, electronic data collection tools in the field. So the survey teams on their phones have uh, an online map and the, the forms that we fill in and they're collecting data live in the field and that's being uploaded um, in real time to the system here so that I can see what they're seeing. So they're sending me images, they're sending me information, they're sending me videos and that kind of thing so I can see exactly what what they're seeing on, on the ground there. And in areas where they can't access, that's always a bit of a challenge. There's parts of this coastline where you physically can't get to. So one of the things that we've been doing here at OSRL is looking at how we can use uh, aerial drones, so UAVs, to access that. Or if it was a real spill, we might have to send a boat round there and put people on that way. But for the exercise, we're just, we're just putting uh, people on the ground where they can. So one of the main benefits of using a remotely piloted aircraft is that the pilot in charge of the aircraft is actually on board the vessel, so right next to the, the incident controller or the incident commander, and we can direct the, uh, the, the remotely piloted aircraft to exactly where it needs to be on scene. So the, the vehicle is buoyancy driven, so we control the buoyancy in, in the vehicle. Uh, and by doing so, the, the glider or the, the, the AUV will sink or float. Uh, because it has wings and it has a rudder, we can control that. So we can control the, uh, the profile of the glider. So either we're, we're flying it down or flying it up like a glider in the air, but underwater. Then again, at predefined intervals, we'll have the glider surface. So basically it takes its, the, the rudder, which has a, a modem, uh, and it will communicate information back through our portal, which is also tied into the OSRL portal. So we'll actually see data feed come back at these predefined intervals. Today we're providing um, a video and audio system that allows uh, responders at the front to actually communicate to the uh, communications base back here. Uh, from here you get situation awareness of the spill. You can also have uh, updates via the uh, communicators on the audio and you could provide also uh, other information, data information being sent backwards and forwards between the vessels to the communications base. So today we've got four feeds. Um, we did have a, a kite feed, but unfortunately the wind's not there currently. Um, we've also got two body cams, so that allows people to move around the vessel where they can provide footage and also top back. And we have a fixed camera, uh, again on one of the vessels, pointing rearwards so they can see the uh, spill and the dispersants being um, dispersed. 
Well, we've, we've got a, a micro AUV, which is an autonomous underwater vehicle, and it's designed to uh, intelligently be deployed by hand or by aircraft uh, to uh, carry out a mission uh, targeted particularly at, at the exercise involved. And today we'll be hunting for hydrocarbons in the water at different depths and uh, reporting back in near real time the maximum value uh, encountered and its location. By being in the water while these things are happening and providing real data, the, the team, the management team, can make uh, real accurate uh, assessments and plans to effectively treat the, treat the event. Uh, we can also monitor the uh, water quality. So if the worst is happening and uh, some, the, the, uh, the spill is taking oxygen out of the water, we can assess that also. So, and that may influence the decision makers' choices of, of um, dispersant, for example. And That's one of, the, one of the interesting aspects of this exercise. It's the first time this, this technology is being deployed, and like several of the technologies being used in the event, this is for evaluation, just to see how, how effective it is. Uh, so this is new technology that OSRL have access to. It's very important, they're very rare that we get an opportunity to put oil on the water and then have a look at how it behaves and then employ a lot of the resources that we've seen today in the field in a real situation. You know, there's been big developments in the last five years, uh, there's lots of new bits of equipment that are now coming along, uh, the UAVs, so the, the small subs that we've, we've seen out in the field today all adds to the, the surveillance in the field. Um, so we traditionally used to relying on aerial surveillance which relies on an aircraft taking images, getting back to the airfield, downloading the images, emailing them across. Where if you can start to have live imagery in the scene, it really enables the response to, to go a lot smoother and a lot more rapidly. So MDA is a, um, a global partner with OSRL, providing satellite imaging services anywhere in the world for oil spill response. So, um, today so far we've provided an image, an optical image from Worldview 3 over the Isle of Wight for um, providing information to the SCAT teams that are in the field doing surveys of the coastlines. We've acquired a radar sat 2 image over the actual uh, location of the oil release uh, near the Isle of Wight in the marine environment and that radar image will be processed soon in Canada at our Gatineau receiving station and then delivered back to us here in the UK. Good morning, uh, the Visualisation Centre. I'm speaking to you from the Solent Guardian. Hopefully over my shoulder you can just see the eco sub there making its way back to the vessel. Um, it's been working through the um, oil. Andy, it's Rob James here. Could you explain to people what you mean by getting some mixing energy in and how we're going to do that? So what we're going to do, Rob, um, is when the um, observation vessels have finished um, and recovered all of the um, underwater autonomous vehicles. It's good to see that there's a lot of new technologies coming so we can monitor where the oil spill are, where the slicks drifts, if there's uh, anything in the water column. And um, that's interesting to see all the, uh, the underwater uh, uh, technology that can provide us with uh, this information. I think it's quite exciting to see um, new developments in the field, in the field and uh, potentially many new ways that we can uh, use all of these uh, technologies to supplement a spill response as well. So it will be exciting to see what happens in the future. Yeah. Um, everyone coming together from around the globe. Uh, you'll see people here from different oil and gas companies, different oil spill response organisations, loads of third party technology, highly technical specialist um, you know, providers that have all come together, brought their collective intelligence and expertise together. Um, and what you can see here today is the outcome of that and uh, a terrific display of all of those put together and how that can inform the operator um, in the command post. Pretty, you're pretty. <laughs>